Hey, hey guys, today we're going to take these two AMS2 Pros, or two Pro AMSs, whatever they, however they say it, but anyways, the new AMSs from Bamboo, and I'm going to hook them up to this P1S. So why do I want to do that? Well, I want to go to eight colors. Um, on this, a, yeah, on this machine over here, I have, have one of the old AMSs. It's kind of crapped out on me, but I want to do eight colors. So as far as the configuration you see here, um, I'm unfortunately not going to be able to go with that. This would be my preferred configuration, but the table that this all sits on um, happens to not be deep enough so that I can pull the bottom AMS out. I basically have to take the bottom AMS off of the table to open it because, like I said, it only goes back so far. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to put this one on top and run this one on the side. But if you are able to do a configuration similar to what I have and you have a table deep enough, um, I'll put a link down to this handy little stand that I printed out. Um, this one happens to be printed out out of Pet G, but I, I believe you can print it out of PLA. And the great thing about this is it doesn't require any glue. Um, you know, it's got some little little pins that you print out and put in it, and then it goes from there. When you order these, they're going to come with a few things. Um, they're going to come with some desiccate in there. We'll end up putting those up in the top here. Um, they're going to come with a wire. They're going to come with some extra um, PTFT, I think it is, tubing. Or the tubing that runs from these motors to the back of the unit. Um, the AMS2s. If you're using an old machine like I am, and you want to use the dryer function, you need to also order the the plug for it so you can plug it into an outlet so you can power it. Um, it's my understanding that if you're not using the dryer, you can plug these in just like the old ones and use them straight that way. And for the most part, that's how I'm going to use them. I ordered the plugs just in case. So if I'm saying I have some filament that's in here for a while, I'm like, I'm going to dry it, I can just plug them in and dry it from there without having to take it out and fuss with that. So anyways, um, you'll also need a hub. You'll have to order the hub separately. It's going to look like this. And then you can see in the back, you can plug four AMSs into it. It's going to come with a few wires. And it's also going to come with some tubing and some screws. So without further ado, why don't we pull this thing, why don't we bring you around back here, and we'll start getting into the setup of this. What we have is you have this little indentation. This is where your hub's going to go. Now, if you're using the Solo AMS, there'll be a, a hub this size and sh relative shape that will go in the spot. But the, the four port hub also goes in there. You can see there's these two um, spots here for screws and they'll actually fit in the indent there. So let's get a little bit of a zoom. Zoomy, zoomy. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'll put a screw in there. It'll come out the, the end, you can see. And that way I can just kind of line that first one up. Once that's started, I'll go ahead and I'll get the other one. Tighten these up real quick. So now our hub's on there. It's nice and secure. You're going to also have one of these cables that are going to come with this. And that'll plug into the bottom of the hub. This will be a four pin. Anyways, so this straight one, we'll put fit in there. So that one will go there. And then down here. Alrighty, so after that is all plugged in here. Like I said, I kind of snaked it around a little bit. Eventually I need to make some kind of poop catcher for down here. I don't really have one yet, but um, like I said, you just kind of get this wire and just kind of make it fit. But anyways, so next we have this tubing that came with these and they give you plenty of tubing. And the thing with the tubing is you want to, this is obviously too long. You don't want all that. So what I'm thinking is you want to make sure you got something that's going to have a nice natural curve to it, um, but not like, you know, not, not no hard bends. So you want to make sure there is a decent amount so it goes in there nice and smooth. 
and you also want something to cut it, they might recommend scissors or something like that. I'll put a link to something like this down below, but I have these cutters specifically for this tubing. Um, I kind of like them. So let's go and cut this one. I think that that looks like a pretty non-aggressive curve there. So let's go ahead and just get our tube in here and boom. One, one tube. Ah, ah, ah. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'll plug that guy in there. Make sure it's in there good. We have a one next to it. The same type of deal here. I want to try to make sure we got something that's not a, too bad of a, I don't want any kinks or anything. So we'll probably cut this one, we'll say about here. Get that in there. So we got our two AMSs hooked up with the PTFE, yeah, you know, the tube. I'm just going to call it the tube because there's so much going on. So something else that should come with this, when you order this, there should be like a kit of parts that come. So you're not going to have to think about all this stuff there. Bamboo's pretty good about including it all. But we have these little things here. Um, I want to see if I'll find the technical term I was calling. You know, the, oh, they're PTFE tube connectors. How about that? But uh, what these are is they're just these little, you can see, let me see if I can focus this. Yeah, just little, little things like that. So we're going to put one of these on the end here. You just press it on there. It's like a pressure fitting, just like a lot of the other stuff. And that way we can connect another, an extension tube on there. So note to self, this is a little hard to get in. You got to kind of put it in there. Okay, so there were part of the instructions initially when I read this that said put your tube in before you put this up there. Now I know why. So when all else fails, make sure you look at the manual because the guy in the video doesn't always know best. So basically when you got it backwards, you can kind of see better. Once it's in there, you can see it kind of go back and forth. You can pull it back and forth. I don't think this angle is too bad. I think that'll be decent. We will find out. That's one of the reasons we do these videos, so we can learn. You look in a manual and think, oh, I can skip that step, or I can put that step in later. Why are we doing that now? Well, sometimes we learn there's a reason. So don't over-tighten these. Just make sure they're snug. We're on there. So, okay. Tubing is set up. <clears throat> so... I'm going to save these because I don't think I need them, but these came with this. These are the six pin plugs. Um, these are nice. These are a lot longer than the ones that came with the AMSs. But I do not believe I need to unwrap the really long ones because this one will go from here to here just fine. And so that means the other one will go from here to there just fine. Ta-da. So anyways, I'm going to take this one. We're going to plug it in up here at the top. That's one in. Then we're going to plug this to the other AMS that's down here. Let me try to run these behind here a little bit. I'm trying to make this, I don't know, kind of orderly. So plug that in there. I do not know if the side that they're plugged into matters or not. I'm going to assume no, but we will find out. You know? Um, there's also, you can see back here, or maybe you can't see, but there's a port for the power. So you'd plug in between these two six pins, the um, actual power source. So this AMS is to this AMS. So I'm gonna take the AMS that's over here, this AMS here, and plug it into the hub. So, It's a little dark in here, you have to excuse me. I don't really have lighting on this side. I'm trying to make do. So in the bottom of our hub, there is a six pin connector right next to the four pin. Let's go ahead and get that in there. Kind of get underneath, give it a little push. 
So, should be ready to rock and roll. Let's turn this on and go around the other side and check it out. So, as you can see, all these are lit up. It looks like we're good here. We have a message that says new firmware is available for our machine. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna update it's for the AMS hub. So that means we're recognizing our hubs, our hub and our AMSs. So that is a, that is a bonus. You know, I shouldn't say it's a bonus. It worked perfectly, just as intended. So we got that. Oh, while we're waiting for that, there's something I picked up I can't wait to use. I don't know if I want to put it on this one, but I want to do a future video about it. I got one of these. Everybody's talking about them. I'm anxious to try it out. One of these glacier blue things. Uh, firmware successfully updated. So we're going to load these up. And when we load these up, um, there's a few things to keep in mind here. Um, one of which is, you know, you want to make sure that you have some reusable spools for these. So there's a couple things you can do. You can rewind plastic spools, things like that. Um, one thing that I personally use, and I'm gonna show you, because cardboard, cardboard dust in these is not good. So you always wanna get something you can refill, or you wanna go on Maker World and get some of these things. Um, you can print these. I usually, you can print them out of Whatever you want, I usually use PET G, um, but these will clip onto your spools, just nice and easy. And they, you got to make sure you get the ones that are per the manufacturer, because all the spools are different. This puts a nice plastic edge around here, so it doesn't mess up your AMSs, and you can print with these. Some people say they get too light. You can put a steel ball in here, um, and then it'll give it a little bit extra weight for when the, the spool gets lower. But like I said. Um, we'll load this bad boy up and we'll do a test print and see how we, see how we did. Alrighty, so we are all loaded up here. You can see I have one actual bamboo roll on here, but the rest of them, I, like I said, I put these little plastic rails on here. It's like I said, to help reduce with some of the, the cardboard dust and everything. Make sure those are on there good. And I got this on here. Something I noticed about these new AMSs that I'm, I'm really liking is they have in the back here these these knobs that I just kind of help with the alignment in here, which is really cool because uh, the old AMS didn't have those. That and um, the, the tubes are a lot more accessible. That's really cool. So like I said, all right, we're going to get ready. I'm going to do the test print on this. Got five colors loaded. Um, got the white, got the orange, the black, the green, and the yellow. And we're going to make some Charizard bookmarks. Stay tuned. Alrighty. So real quick, you know, we got all of our filament loaded. One of the things I did before I came upstairs, because the printer's in the basement, everything else is downstairs, I took a picture of what I had in which slots. That way when I got upstairs, I didn't forget, you know, the order of the color. So, you know, this, I haven't really checked to see if on the uh, P1S there's a way to do it from the actual screen. There may be. And I'm just missing it, but you know, just in case there, there's not, um, we're going to cover how to do this in the software. So first thing we're going to do is, uh, you know, you go to the tab that says device, you'll select your device and you know, there'll be different things you can do under here, but status is what you want. Um, and it's going to have your AMS slots listed. And as you can see, there's nothing in here. So we're going to go to the first one. And we're going to select filament. We're going to go with, um, where is it? Generic PLA. I probably rolled right past it because, you know, I was just off to the races there. So generic PLA, it'll have the nozzle temperatures, you know, listed there. And then, um, we can select a color. Uh, this one is yellow. We'll confirm. Next one. Again, El Generico. Now, if you get some other, you know, types of filaments, you know, you can load the profiles just like normal, you know, all that happy jazz. But just go through and put them in here. And then once that's all filled, um, you'll be ready to print. Like I said, we're going to do some Charmander, I think it is. 
and I'm not I'm not the hippest pokey pokey guy Pokemon person. So let's see. We got black. This one will be. This one's gonna be orange. But anyways, but yeah, that's what we're gonna go through, and that's how you do that. Um, yes. What did it? Oh, I didn't select orange. Oops. Alrighty, so now we got our first AMS set up here. If you look right here in this area, it actually lists your AMS systems. So you can actually toggle between them and set them up. Um, so I got white and grain here also. So you can, like I said, that's where you can toggle between the two. Uh, so yeah, cool. Uh, let's uh, run this and uh, see how the print turns out. So you can see these guys much prettier looking like i said they, they looked good before but getting that those white highlights really did well anyways guys um thanks for watching and i hope this helped you have a good day